Okay, okay. Okay, okay. You go ahead and get going. I want to hear this thing that you're going to do. You, gonna, you want to hear the thing I'm going to do? Yes, just do your I, thing. Just do my thing. You know yes. what? We're, we're going to do a thing today. We're going to talk about epic titties. No. Yes, epic. epic. Doesn't yep. tennis mean like titties, though? No, it's epic like, titties. Like the Grand Teton? No, no, no it no. doesn't. It no. doesn't? Uh-uh. Aw. No. <sighs> Not at all. Okay, fine. I'm disappointed. It's, According to this that you're showing me, his name means acquired. Acquired? Because he was a slave. Yes, he was a slave. And that was his that was his slave name. Nobody knew his real birth name. Because yes. he was acquired. Uh, he yes. later became a free man and he actually he was he had a he had a limp. He was uh yeah. He was of ill health and he was lame and but he was a great stoic teacher. Yeah, he was actually kicked out for his teachings at that time. And most of his teachings, of course, are stoic. He had the discourses, of which four bo books are excellent, and the Enchiridion, or manual, which is what we'll be reading today. Well, we per should probably point out that we don't have any of his works. Yeah, we he never wrote down anything. All of the writings that we have were done by his students. Yes, his overachiever. <laughs> his overachiever. The person in the class that messed up the curve. Aww. He wrote down all of this. Yeah, that's probably true. He was the one that brought the apple every day. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And the joint medicine and the joint medicine, yeah. I rubs it I rubs it on its skin. Yes. All right. So, um Oh yeah. This is we're going to go ahead and dive into the Enchiridion, which uh what are your thoughts on this text before we start? Um I think it's awesome. Why? Because it's filled with wisdomy goodness. Wisdomy goodness. Mm, mm -hmm. Is it is it chewy? No, it's not chewy. Well, is it savory? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, savory wisdom. That's it's got good. the umami. Umami. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of Romans did enjoy their mushrooms. Exactly. And so did the Greeks. 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 Speaking is hard. It, it can be, yes. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start out here. With one, some things are in our control and others not. Things in our control are opinion, pursuit, desire, aversion, and, in a word, whatever are our own actions. Things not in our control are body, property, reputation, command, and, in one word, whatever is not our own actions. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're not so, doing it, it's, it's out of your control. Right? So basically, but if you're watching this when it's put up cuz we're not actually live right now which is confusing for me but um we, we it, yeah it's if not you're watching your this if you're watching this you have no control over anything we're going to say or do um and we have no control over anything you're going to say or do um, up for jesus we no not i guess this is your channel whatever say it all you want yeah, i can say dicks out for jesus <laughs> you can yeah and as far as this, there's also like modern day Stoics have separated this a little more to mm. things that are under your influence, but not necessarily your control. Mm. And what does that what do they mean by influence? Can you kind of go into that a bit? Well, say you have a friend and your friend is in a position of of power. Mm -hmm. um, being that that's your friend you could recommend things to that friend and possibly influence them to make decisions on your behalf. Ah, so you do have a lot more control over your life than was known in the ancient world, I suppose. Yeah, and, and later philosophers would have gone and did go into this, the influence that people would have over politicians and such. But the modern Stoics um, are the ones that really kind of opened this up. It did seem a little too black and white. Yeah, it is very dichotomous. And by the way, just for a correction, it's written in 135 ACE. So fairly early 
in our time. Yes, ACE standing stands for after Christ was executed. Or ace. After common era. Yeah. Bada. So ACE is after common era. Yes. Yay. So they kind of the modern Stoics or the Stoics of this time frame from where we're reading Epictetus were more kind of just opening the seed of Stoicism, right? It's blossomed from this time. Well, you have the ancient Stoics, which were just basically slightly less aesthetic than the Cynics. Mm -hmm. And they had a lot of, there was more to it. And even once you got to the Roman Stoics, there was still basically three branches of this philosophy. Um, there was Stoic logic, Stoic physics, and uh, Stoic ethics. Ethics, yes. Uh, by the time you got to Rome, they had, they still taught physics and logic, which those two things mean absolutely nothing comparable to what those two words mean now. <laughs> right. um, by the time it got to Rome, they were really starting to get into the ethics based yes. philosophy, um, especially when you're talking about like Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor, he was basically like, we don't need logic or physics ethics is all that's really important for us well to be fair they were living during the most harsh times of rome i mean really if you look at the leaders that they had from the time of seneca and to this period uh, they needed ethics <laughs> they desperately needed so yeah and uh you can lead a moron to knowledge but you can't force them to think that's true that's true you you definitely can't force like uh say Nero to think. No. Right. <laughs> Especially since they were all drinking from lead pie uh, lead uh Cup. cups. Yeah, yeah. And that had a tendency to to fuck up the brain. Yeah, a couple of them, uh, I believe at least Caligula it happened to I think it was Caligula who got really really sick and then after that it was never quite the same. Mm. So it could have been like anything. But yeah, I mean, basically, the only thing that I've point I was trying to point out here is uh, modern Stoics are a little more nuanced in terms of this. It's still basically what is in your control, um, and what's outside of your control, or what is in your influence of control would be the modern Stoic uh, philosophy. So what would you say as far as things that are within your control? What would you say is the uh, has the most impact on your life and your circumstances? What's in my control that's the yeah. most would be actions. Actions taken without really thinking. Ah, so things you haven't quite reasoned through, right? Yeah. And what about things? Well, I guess it doesn't really matter about things out of our control, right? I mean, or does it? It doesn't really matter, but at the same time, we put a lot of focus into, say, our reputation. Mm. Your reputation can be destroyed in an instant. Um, oh. And many times that's completely outside of your control. And so people will kind of walk on eggshells mm -hmm. trying to prevent their reputation from being hurt. Right. Which actually just makes them look shadier. And has a tendency to taint their reputation. Yeah, yeah. Um, like there but, are some politicians that are really well poised, and so it makes people pause. Yeah. So you're like, what are they hiding? Mm hmm. No. So when it comes to, and we've seen damaged reputations, it's been, we've been soaked in it in the news like the past couple of years, right? Especially with. Like uh, the Me Too movement and all these different people being accused of things that have progressively gotten to where it's no, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, your reputation can definitely be damaged in a heartbeat. And other yeah. than how you act and how you influence your world, I don't see how much control you could have over that. If you're a good person and you do your best, then I would say that's all you can do in terms of reputation. Exactly. And one of the things that would be important to say here is the 
the stoic idea of fate. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of people, they hear the term fate and they think it's like, okay, the future is predetermined and this is what is going to happen. Right. Right. The stoics would say, okay, so what you do today is going to lead to different circumstances tomorrow. And the circumstances that what you did today lead to is beyond your control. It's within the hands of fate. Yeah. Um, so going with like the, the me too movement and, and that stuff, you know, we had people who were sexually harassing and assaulting people for years. Yes. And they didn't realize that someday this would come to light. Yep. I don't care how, good of a person they tried to portray themselves to the rest of the world that stuff was going to come to light sooner or later yes and i think with the internet and the way information shared so quickly it's more difficult to bury yeah definitely so you have uh lots more avenues nowadays to uh where your reputation can become tarnished Mm -hmm. oh yeah so just don't be a dick yeah because um if you're a dick, if you were a dick yesterday, well, you can't do anything about it today. It's already done. Yeah. And one thing I did want to go into before we really start getting into this text is what do the Stoics mean by according to nature or just nature in general? Um, according to nature is just the natural occurrence of things. Um, how how we perceive things as being in the everyday world um it's not a situation of becoming at one with nature like you would get in maybe a a eastern buddhist type of tradition right so living according to your nature would be you're never going to fly so don't try to fly you're if if you have no ability to speak then you probably aren't going to be a great public speaker right basically it's just you know a cat knows how to be a cat a dog knows how to be a dog humans on the other hand sometimes worry too much about the things that they can't do Mm. instead of worrying about the things that they can do so living in accordance with nature in the stoic sense would be to live in accordance with the things that you can do in your life. Mm. I would imagine too, because uh, in reading about on Epictetus and his philosophy and everything, it seemed to like, even if you're religious, this framework, this ethical framework, and even the med- metaphysical framework can work no matter what your belief system is in regard to the God question, right? Yes. So it could also mean if you're a theist and you're going through this uh, stoic literature, you could also think that, you know, according to nature is according to what God provided you with, or according to nature can be uh, like to achieve um, well, eudaimonia. Yeah. eudaimonia right or oneness with nature or you know any of that well, and even if you're even if you're an an atheist it works as well because you don't have to buy into the divinity or any of that kind of metaphysical type of stuff right yeah it was to achieve eudaimonia which eudaimonia yeah. is like a a peaceful state of tranquil tranquil happiness in this life it's it's those moments where you just kind of sit there and go ah this is kind of nice i enjoy this this part of life it was trying to figure out how you could enrich yourself and get more of that in your life right so and at the root at the core of this philosophy is this first sentence right some things are within our control and others are not yes And to let go of or be indifferent to things that are out of your control, you can not only better focus on the things that are in your control, 
but you can not worry so much about things that are in the past or the future. Yeah, because you can't change the past and you don't know what the future is going to bring. The only thing that you have is now and what you do now will naturally lead to a better or a worse um, future scenario for you. And that's in kind some of, ways. So is the kind of um, I don't want to use the word power because it's kind of a strong word, but when having the ability to respond in that moment, it kind of leads you to a what do you call it? Like it'll give you a self-esteem boost, right? Yeah. If you feel like you're doing your best, you're going to be pretty damn happy no matter what's going on. Yeah, well, I mean, okay, so think of it in a situation of a diet. Uh, no one likes to be on diets. But there's a certain amount of joy that comes from skipping that tempting dessert. Mm. Like when when the dessert round comes around and you're like, you know what, I'm on a diet. I'm not going to have that. And later on, you're like, you know what, bravo, I did the right thing there. I didn't eat that dessert. I feel good that I didn't give in to my passions and my temptations and eat that dessert. There's a certain amount of joy that comes from living within your means and not trying to overdo yourself, over overspend, um, overindulge. With Stoics, it was moderation in all things. Right. So, I including moderation, because sometimes if, I mean, you're going to get drunk every now and then. Yeah, you're going to, you're going to get a little blowjob here and again. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why the Stoics were a little different than the Cynics. The Cynics were like, ah, we, we don't. We don't do any of this. <laughs> no, yeah, because, you live in a bucket. Yeah, because they were ascetics. They were they denied themselves pleasures in life, worldly pleasures. And, and the Epicureans were like, ah, we're gonna eat cheese and get blowjobs all day. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's accurate, but it's and, pretty <laughs> <fun>. <laughs> I know. It's not. <laughs> Uh, so, inane dragon and uh, charismerific. If you're watching this, I'm sorry. Anyway, <laughs> so, well, I guess we could go ahead and move on, along in the text now that we've kind of, I mean, because this this first statement, this first little paragraph here, is really at the heart of what this text is getting to, isn't it? Yes. So that's why I kind of wanted to go over kind of a broad scope of some of the terms and some of the uh, some of the common themes and advice that's given in this text so the things in our control are by nature free unrestrained unhindered but those not in our control are weak slavish restrained belonging to others remember then that if you suppose that things which are slavish by nature are also free and that what belongs to others is you, your own then you will be hindered you will lament you will be disturbed and you will find fault both with gods and men but if you suppose that only to be your own, which is your own, and what belongs to others, such as it really is, then no one will ever compel or restrain you. Further, you will find fault with no one or accuse no one. You will do nothing against your will. No one will hurt you. You will have no enemies, and you will not be harmed. Well, that's, I'm sold. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. So <laughs> a couple of really easy examples for this. Number one, we have all more than likely been in a situation where whether you were at work or at school or doing something that you didn't want to do and you constantly were looking at the clock. Yeah. You have no control over time. And yet somehow we have it in our minds that if I continually look at the clock, it's going to go faster and it's we're going to get through the day and <laughs> it just it slows things down and it makes yeah. us feel awful instead of just getting through what needs to be done. Right. We, we spend more time worrying about making the time go faster and it never goes faster. <laughs> Life is not without a sense of irony, is it? 
Exactly. It's not. <laughs> um, another example of this would be, say you're a person who has been locked up in prison. If you spend your entire time there thinking about how great it would be to be outside the prison, it's going to make your time there much worse. Whereas the best thing in your control is to learn and to rehabilitate and to get through your time and to fill your time with things that are within your control that keeps your mind away from the wouldn't it be great to be outside. Right. And it kind of ties into this whole, I can't help but apply this to like nowadays, but it seems like we're in this current system that we have where we're constantly just wanting, wanting, wanting. It seems like we're more and more disturbed, despite the fact that we have so much to keep us alive and so much to keep us happy and so much to keep us preoccupied, yet we're not content with that. Mm-hmm. We're always wanting to have something that we don't have. Well, and, and it really, the, the people of Rome at this time were faced with kind of the same situation that we are today. I mean, our lives are way easier than the people of Rome. Yeah, but, but, but by yeah. contrast to all the people around them, I mean, they, Rome had heated floors and big baths and aqueducts and yes. a great army and things. They had stuff. They had there was, well, there was plenty of time for leisure. And yeah. with leisure comes thinking. And there's good ways to think and there's bad ways to think. And so the Stoics were really any of the schools at this time. And by schools, I mean, schools of philosophy were trying to find the best way to think. Wait, you mean there's more than one school of philosophy? Oh, yeah. There's tons of schools of philosophy. Holy shit. So it's not just an echo chamber of whatever. No, it's definitely not an echo chamber of whatever. So there's not any sure one freaking answer that could be found in philosophy. There's different points of view. Yes. Holy shit. Mind yeah. blown. Like the Stoics didn't get along with the Cynics or and the, the Epicureans. Yeah. And nobody got along with the Academy. Um, and, <laughs> and I mean, and you I'm had surprised. like, you had the eclectics who pissed everyone off because the eclectics, which is a word we use today, but it actually was a philosophical school. Eclectics would pick and choose from the various schools around them and say, okay, that's good. And uh, we don't like that. So we're not going to do that. We like that over there in that school. And that's what we're going to pick. And uh, then you had like the dialectics. Yeah. um, Who thought that the, the peace in life was found in words and in in using the best words and finding the best words for any situation. I have the best words, believe me. Um, people that wanted to narrow stuff down to be like, you know what, this word means this, and this is all it will ever mean. Then you have the skeptics that basically say, none of these words mean anything. Yeah, the skeptics who were like, we can't know anything. That's why we're centrists. You're, yeah, you're a brain in the vat. <laughs> I'm a centrist because I'm a brain in the vat. <laughs> yeah. and there's an evil scientist that's feeding me reality yes skeptic um if if you were to go back to ancient rome and and that time period to be a skeptic was not a good thing how do you know that because they would say things like that how do you know that and that how do you know that and that <laughs> I um, with that that's gone on long enough they well but the skeptics basically believe that you could not attain knowledge mm. there was not all knowledge to be attained yeah you cannot know what there's no definite truth about anything right yes so if you were to say this beside me is a tree the skeptic would say well how do you know that and you would say well because it has all the properties of the tree well what do you know how do you know what the properties of the tree are and then you would say well, how you know the properties of the tree are and they would say well how do you know those <laughs> and it would just continually on and on and on. They basically got the annoying part of Socrates and was like, this is what it's all about. Yeah, we're going to go around trolling these bitches. Yes. <laughs> uh, skeptic badgers don't care. Mm-hmm. Continuing on? 
Yes, continue on. Engage. Aiming, <laughs> Aiming therefore, at such great things, remember that you must not allow yourself to be carried, even with a slight tendency, towards the attainment of lesser things. Indeed, you must entirely quit some things and for the present postpone the rest. But if you would both have these great things along with power and riches, then you will not gain even the latter because you aim at the former too. But you will absolutely fail of the former by which alone happiness and freedom are achieved. Okie doke. Huh. So, yeah, um, basically put, if you have a goal in mind, stick to that goal. A lot of times people will go, you know what, I, I want to save money for a new car, which is an example of me right now. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, how can we bring ourselves into this? Okay, yeah. I want to save money for a new car. Well, I also would love to have a, a new laptop. But in order to attain both, I need the amount of money for both of those items. Right. If I go out and buy the laptop, then it's going to take me a longer time to get the car. Right. If what you kind of have to establish what is more of a pressing need. Yeah. Of course. And the car, I mean, if you pay for the car, then you're going to be able to go back and forth to work. And therefore, you could save more money for a laptop. Yeah. If, you buy, if you buy the laptop, then you're pretty much fucked. Oh yeah, and, and Epictetus is going to go into that later, giving um, an example of a person who is wants to be in the Olympics, and and he'll say, you know, all that they have to give up in order to be an Olympian, because they have to exercise and they have to eat right, and they have to sleep the right amount, they have to be working out the right amount. So you're giving up a lot in order to make that goal. So, but if that's your goal, then you can't be a couch potato. But I like being potato. But you'll never be in the Olympics if you're a couch potato. Then I shall be French fries. Okay. Work, therefore, to be able to say to every harsh appearance, you are but an appearance and not absolutely the thing you appear to be. And then examine it by those rules which you have and... And first, and chiefly, by this, whether it concerns the things which are in your own control or those which are not. And if it concerns anything not in our control, be prepared to say that it is nothing to you. Okay. That's, that's quite a response. Well, it's nothing to me. I'm cool. This is fine. Yeah, I kind of think that this is a situation where people get the idea that Stoics were unemotional. Because some of the things outside of your control is like your kid's death um, or your your spouse's death. They do go into that in later parts where they're like, you know what? If this is going on, yeah, it's okay to mourn. It's okay to have emotion. But there are things that people get in their minds that they think, oh, this is the most important thing. I have to do this. I absolutely have to do this. And you kind of have to realize a lot of times that it just appears to be something you have to do and is in reality just something you want to do. And when right. it's something that you just want to do, it can lead to a lot of heartache and struggle as opposed to doing the things that you need to do. Right. Like getting the laptop instead of the car. Yeah. So did you want to read the second verse or whatever? Well, I think we get, do you want me to read it? You can. Remember that following desire promises the attainment of that which you are desirous, and aversion promises the avoiding to that which you are adverse. However, he who fails to obtain the object of his desire is disappointed, and he who incurs the object of his aversion, wretched. If, then, you confine your aversion to those objects only which are contrary to the nature, natural use of your faculties, which you have in your own control, you will never incur anything to which you are averse. But if you are averse to sickness or death or poverty, you will be wretched. Remove aversion then from all things that are not in your control and transfer it to things contrary to the nature of what is in your control. But for the present, totally suppress desire. 
For if you desire any of the things which are not in your own control, you must necessarily be disappointed. And of those which are, and which it would be laudable, laudable to desire, nothing is yet in your possession. Use only of the appropriate actions of pursuit and avoidance, and even these lightly and with gentleness and reservation. See, this is why I said that uh, parallels great with uh, Buddhist philosophy is because it's this highlighting of how desire leads to suffering. Yeah. And if you're constantly trying to des attain objects that you want and that you're constantly wanting, wanting, then you're definitely going to, you're going to be enslaved by the thing, the object of your desire, or not even the object, just the desire itself. Yeah. And the same thing goes for things that you, you are averse to. Um, right. If, if you spend all of your time going, I don't want to get sick. I don't make me sick. Don't. And then you get sick. Well, then you're going to, have wasted a whole lot of time worrying about getting sick when yeah. getting sick is really outside of your control. You I'm have sick. no. I'm what? sick right now and I have no control. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> we, we have no control over sickness. We have no control over whether or not we're going to die. And uh, as opposed to what uh, conservatives would like to have us believe, a lot of times we have no control over whether we're poor or not. Um, so if you're spending all of your time going, oh, I hate sickness, I hate death, I hate poverty, instead of trying to live as best within your means, wherever you are at that given moment, you're going to be a lot more disappointed in life. Right. That's very true. One question I did have. How exactly... Bananas. <laughs> It says that uh, if you're averse to sickness or death or poverty, you will be wretched. Remove aversion then from all things that are not within our control. So these things, like getting sick and death and all of these things, we're to remove aversion. Now, that sounds simple. Oh, I just won't be averse to this. But it's really a lot more complicated than that, isn't it? Well, um, aversion in this sense means to fight against it. Right. Um, so people spend an awful lot of energy fighting against getting sick, fighting against their uh, eventual death. So it's like, don't struggle against the flow. Um, as far as not want, wanting it, it's going to happen anyway. So it's indifferent to us. It's going to happen you're going to get sick every now and then it's going to happen. So don't spend your entire life worrying about getting sick. Yeah. I, I'd say like in terms of prevention, you know, that's something within your control, but if that prevention fails, that is out of your control and you should accept it. Right. Right. Yay. Right. Right. All right. Cool. Well, show your channel. My channel is the Godless Iowan, and I'm the Godless Iowan. Woo! <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> That's perfect, actually. So there I, you go. I think everybody knows who you are, really. But subscribe to Godless Iowan. He is doing this series with me, and I love it. I've been waiting for this for a long time, and yes. I'm really glad that you're doing this. And, and the more subs I get, the more she has sex with me. So please sub. Yes, that's how that works. It now, is. I did want to ask you if you had anything that you wanted the audience to contemplate or answer, like if you had a question or. Yes. I would like the audience to question things that they worry a lot about that they have no control over. What are, what are things that you're worrying about that you have absolutely no control over? And is it worth worrying about? Oh, good. Excellent. Well, thank you all for watching. And make sure that you subscribe to the Godless Island and have a good day. Bye. Vagina, vagina's out for Venus. Special thank you to all my lovely patrons. I so appreciate your support. 
Also, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you!